In the summer of 2006, I made a highly emotional and sincere promise to my mother that would dictate the next 10 and a half years of my life. My mother, Patty, was a single mother and a former English teacher who instilled in me the absolute power of literature and a love of books. And she absolutely loved books, and she would uh, reread books all the time. And one of the things she would always say to me is that print is forever, and characters in books never die because they will live forever inside these pages. Now, when I was 35 years old, my, uh, my mother or Patty was given a terminal diagnosis of six months to a year, and she asked me to come home and help her through it. I said yes, put my life on indefinite hold, and went home to live with her for what would ultimately be her final five months. In that time period, because we knew beyond a shadow of a doubt what her fate was going to be, we made the conscious decision that we were not going to let this beat us or depress us. So one night, based on a very inspirational third season West Wing quote, <laughs> we decided that we were going to throw her an end of her life party, where we were going to invite people from all through her life, from every generation, from all around the country, to celebrate her one final time. The journey to that party was fraught with ups and downs, and at some points it did not look like she was going to make it, but she ultimately did, and the party, the stars aligned, everybody showed up, and the party was a complete success. Patty got her final wish, and for me, it was the most profound experience I have ever had in my life. The next day, Patty and I were in her bedroom. She was sitting upright on her bed. I was sitting next to her on a rocking chair, and we were holding hands. We were talking about the last night at that party, and in this highly emotional moment, I said to her, and I quote, Nothing you and I have been through will be in vain. I will tell this story to whoever will listen. And she looked at me, and she said, Okay. From that point, uh, well, a few days later, Patty died. And then I was left with this promise that I needed to fulfill. But I had no idea how I was going to fulfill this because I did not want to be the guy who walked around and said, do you want to hear a story about when my mama died? But that's what I became. I moved to Los Angeles, and I did the absolute stereotypical thing of I did a one-man show about my mother's death. And I made a 60-minute version, a 30-minute version. I started telling this story in storytelling shows. I told it in a moth story in Los Angeles. And I would tell it to as many strangers as I possibly could. At one point, I, I was going to be made into a movie. And this guy who gave me all these promises because... Uh, one of my attractive female friends introduced me to this guy, and he just fed me with everything, and it looked like this was going to be made into a movie. But I found out his ultimate goal was to sleep with my attractive friend, and once he did, I was no longer part of the equation. But I was driven, and I just I needed to tell this story to as many people as I possibly could. But I didn't know where it ended. I had a joke with my best friend that... I can make any conversation, no matter what the topic, organically find its way to the five-month period I lived with my mother right before she died, <laughs> as evidenced by the fact that I'm telling it now because I found a way to fit it into the theme of goals. <laughs> so for years, I kept doing this and kept telling it to as many people as I possibly could. And one time, this friend of mine sat me down as we were drinking, and he, through a little bit of in vino veritas, he said, when does this end for you? And I said, I don't know. And he goes, you've got to end this, because you've got to find a way to be Kevin again, and not just Kevin whose mom died. And that really hit me, and it really made sense to me, and it really just bothered me, because that's what I was becoming. So I stopped telling it for a while. But then one day, I got an out-of-the-blue email from this woman who was putting together a compilation of a book. And she had heard my story, and she asked me if I would be a part of this book that she was going to have with this major publisher. And I was so excited. I said, yes, I would very much like that. And on the 10-year anniversary of my mother's death, I wrote, the, I wrote the final draft that was going to go to the publishers. And it was the most symbolic thing for me. At 1159 on July 2nd, I sent it, and I felt like I had fulfilled a big thing. However. On March 21st, 2017, this book was released, and I went to a bookstore at 10 a.m. right when they opened, 
And I was so proud, and I walked up, and I asked for this book, and they gave it to me. And I went outside to my car, and I just looked at it, and I just started to ugly cry. The most ugly cry I have ever done in my life, so much that it was so profound to me that I pulled up my phone and started taking pictures of my ugly cry because the thing that really got me about this was that I felt complete at that moment. And I felt that I was Kevin again. Because when I saw her name on page 66, there was something that I did not expect that happened. The fact that she was now forever. Because print is forever. Because characters in books never die. They live forever inside those pages. Thank you very much.